This conference will now be recorded. This is a short, today will be a short class because uh, already autoimmune hepatitis and primary biliary syndrome uh, already discussed in our last in our, in our last class. Today we will be discussing about uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis and uh, IGS, I, IG, IgG for uh, cholangitis. Okay. So in the last class we have discussed about uh, this autoimmune hepatitis, which is uh, which is the presence of serum the antibodies and peripheral blood T lymphocytes, which is reactive with the self uh, proteins, and this causes uh, liver cell damage, leading to and directed by high high levels of serum immunoglobulin with particular elevation of IgG, and it is most common in women as already discussed, and uh, pathophysiology it is the presence of uh, liver. Liver kidney microsomal antibodies is a specific for this disease. And uh, this LTM or other serum chronic HCV infection. So, little I will be going in fast. We are addressing the previous topic. So, the, these are the conditions that are associated with autoimmune hepatitis that are migrating, migrating polyarthritis and all those things. Next, coming to the clinical features, which is a, this uh, autoimmune hepatitis, a insidious in onset. And uh, one fourth of the patients will be resembling about. Uh, Viral hepatitis and uh, they, they lead to the acute presentation will lead to extensive liver necrosis and leading to liver failure. And there will be features of other features that are uh, non systemic features, such as there will be fever, arthralgia, vitiligo, and all those things. The jaundice is present in mild to moderate severity. The most common jaundice is the presenting complaint in a uh, very minute number of cases. And this, there will be other uh, autoimmune diseases that are associated with the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis. These are they are may they may present as in a clinical presentation. So investigation suggests that there is a polystatic phase of uh, liver function test with IgG levels will be increased, uh, increased, and liver biopsy in uh, suspected cases is done. So the management is corticosteroids. Which is prednisone is usually given at a dose of 40 milligrams per day. If the uh, maintenance is approached when the when the analgesics become normal, the maintenance dose is started, and uh, it is uh, the corticosteroid doses is gradually tapered. Yeah, gradually tapered at a dose of 5 to 10 milligrams per day, and uh, and uh, for the main in for maintenance therapy, azathioprine is usually azathioprine is usually given at a, a dose of 1 to uh, 1 to 1.5 milligram per kg per day. And uh, the 
newer agents such as uh, mycofenlet apart from azathioprine the newer agents such as uh, mycofenlet mofepril are usually given and patient are usually monitored for acute exacerbation and uh, depending on the exacerbation the dose of corticosteroid is usually increased or decreased then coming to primary biliary cirrhosis it is a it is also a polystatic liver disease with a predominantly affects the middle aged women and uh, there is a strong effect with anti mitochondrial uh, antibodies and it is characterized by the granular matter inflammation of portal portal tract leading to progressive damage and eventually loss of small and medium sized bile ducts this in turn leads to fibrosis and cirrhosis of the liver and the, these patients are usually present with itching and tiredness So it is a strong. It, 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 uh, this disease is a strong female preponderance, which is nine to nine, nine to one ratio, and it is most common in smoke cigarette smokers. And this disease closely associated with other autoimmune non-hepatic diseases such as the thyroid disease, and and there is a actually DR8 genetic association is usually seen. Next one to uh, this uh, this is flow chart. Which uh, shows the uh, this flow chart usually shows how we, how the primary biliary cirrhosis occurs when there is genetic susceptibility that and uh, with the help of environmental trigger factors so there will be latent disease in which the leptis will be normal when there when there uh, when the genetic uh, genetic factors act there will be early disease manifestation in which leptis becomes uh, abnormal leading to later disease. following the work decompensation so after liver decompensation if they are if the patients are affordable and go for liver transplant uh, they will be surviving and there is every chance of 30% patient of after liver transplant they may be every chance of recurrence of the disease so these are all the clinical features of the primary biliary cirrhosis and the associated diseases include sicca syndrome systemic sclerosis celiac disease and thyroid disease So, when a patient of primary biliary cirrhosis usually complains of fatigue, usually hypothyroidism should be ruled out. Should be ruled out in those patients. So, diagnosis and investigation. LST is uh, showing the polystatic pattern. There uh, and when the uh, anti-mitochondrial antibodies are usually present in 95% of the patients, and uh, MRCP is uh, MRCP or ERCP is usually done to exclude other biliary diseases. So, liver biopsy. is a for diagnostic sensitivity and uh, there will be there will be development of portal hyperfunction before the onset of histological histological onset of cirrhosis and uh, management is the immunosuppressant corticosteroid and azathioprine penicillin are all tried but uh, they didn't show any significant result in uh, primary biliary cirrhosis only rso deoxycholic acid is usually given at a dose of 13 to 15 mg per kg per day which improves the cholestasis cholestasis markers of jaundice and uh, this also this rso deoxycholic acid is also shown to shown to promote significant which is the disease progression so for uh, pruritus cholesterol in a dose of 4 to 16 g per day is usually given And uh, other drugs such as rifampicin, naltrexone, and plasma therapies and liver support are usually given. So fatigue, for fatigue, no specific treatment. Only fatigue, for fatigue and uh, malabsorption, only uh, vitamin supplements. Liver, liver sol, usually the fat soluble vitamin supplements are usually given. And to for uh, hepatic uh, bone disease, yes, yeah, to 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 mark the progression of the osteoporosis bisphosphonates are usually given and uh, calcium and vitamin d3 are given to for strengthening of the bones so then then overlap syndrome which is uh, nothing but ama negative primary biliary cirrhosis which is also known as autoimmune cholangitis so and these patients will demonstrate uh, all the features all clinical biochemical and histological features of primary biliary cirrhosis apart from anti mitochondrial antibody is negative in this patient so on investigation they see uh, there is there will be raised serum transaminases serum igg levels and titers of iron tend to be higher in these yes yeah, in these patients uh, when compared to ama ama positive that is primary biliary cirrhosis so the treatment line is same as that of uh, primary biliary cirrhosis 
for overlap in the so now coming to our class proper class today that is primary sclerosing cholangitis this is also like the primary biliary sclerosis it is also a uh, cholestatic liver disease in which there uh, it is in which it is caused by diffuse inflammation and fibrosis of the liver liver which uh, and it involves the entire biliary tree leading to obliteration of the intrahepatic and ex, both uh, both intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts so leading to prim, uh, primary uh, ultimately ultimately it leads to biliary cirrhosis leading to portal hepatitis and heart hepatic failure is hepatic failure so most common cause of death in patients of primary steroid cholangitis is by hepatic failure and there is incidence about 6.3 percent 6.3 per every 1 lakh population and uh, there is a there is a high chance of people with the primary sclerosis in cholangitis developing cholangiocarcinoma that is 10 to 30 percent of primary sclerosis uh, primary sclerosis in cholangitis patient develop cholangiocarcinoma next it is uh, when compared to primary biliary cirrhosis it is twice common in men whereas primary biliary cirrhosis is common in women of middle aged group whereas the primary sclerosis cholangitis is common in men of middle aged group that is 25 to 40 years of age and uh, the diagnostic criteria for primary uh, primary sclerosis cholangitis is uh, there will be generalized bleeding and stenosis of biliary biliary system on which is uh, observed on cholangiography and there is there will be uh, absence of polydopolithiasis and uh, yeah, yeah. there will be hello so and there is expression of bile duct cancer by prolonged follow up so this this, uh, this is the diagnostic criteria for diagnosing primary sclerosing cholangitis so what are the diseases that are associated with primary sclerosing cholangitis so you can you can get it out you have selling selling here the primary then what is secondary sclerosing cholangitis the secondary sclerosing cholangitis is the is the disease in which there is a predisposing factor that is it is associated with some other disease so the diseases that are seen with primary sclerosing cholangitis are ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease chronic pancreatitis retroperitoneal fibrosis redes thyroiditis retroorbital tumors immune deficiency state Glaucoma syndrome angioimmunoplastic lymphadenopathy histiocytosis x autoimmune hemolytic anemia igg4 associated cholangitis or autoimmune pancreatitis this is spread autoimmune pancreatitis or igg4 associated cholangitis because these two are most from um, most interlinked and they can't be differentiated further and uh, secondary sclerosing cholangitis then is used as i said before is used when typical bile duct changes described when they, there is a clear predisposing factor for duct fibrosis what are the clear predisposing factors for duct fibrosis that includes previous bile duct surgery bile duct stones and intrahepatic infusion of 5 fluoro deoxyuridine or insertion of formalin in hepatic hepatic uh, hepatic hepatitis for uh, sclero as a sclerosing agent or insertion of uh, alcohol into hepatic tumors or any para uh, parasitic infections like uh, chlorophyll chlor sinensis and all those things or any history of autoimmune pancreatitis or IgG4 assessed cholangitis or any autoimmune deficiency disorder such as AIDS due to infection with cytomegalovirus or cryptosporidium. So when there is a, any predisposing fact, factor that leading to biliary biliary duct obstruction and bleeding fibrosis then it is termed as secondary serology cholangitis so what is the pathophysiology of primary serology cholangitis usually the pathophysiology is uh, unknown and it is it shows a close association with intermediary bowel disease so patients with primary serology cholangitis and adverse cholangitis are uh, high risk of uh, are at a high risk of developing colorectal cancers. So, immunologically, immunological these patients are uh, there is a genetic uh, genetic susceptibility in these individuals. But when there is a 
apart from genetic susceptibility, toxic or infection reaction also cause this primary serology in pollen jetty. Uh, this uh, infect, the genetic susceptibility is, a, is a closely linked to HLA haplotype A1, B8, BR3 or BRW52A has been usually identified. So the immunological factors are detected by showing the by reports which shows there is humoral and cellular abnormalities in primary serology pollen data. So usually there will be detection of P and R. Perinuclear, anti-nuclear, cytoplasmic, anti-neutrophil, cytoplasmic antibodies have been detected in 60 to 80 percent of patients in the in 60 days of alternative qualities. And uh, patients of with uh, 30 to 40 percent of patients with uh, alternative qualities alone, there will be presence of P uh, anti uh, perinuclear, uh, anti-neutrophil, cytoplasmic antibodies, that is uh, P anti antibodies. So, what will be the clinical features? These are uh, usually Detected accidentally in patients of alternative qualities on routine examination when there is very dark night phosphate levels, and they usually complain of fatigue, intermittent jaundice, weight loss, right upper quadrant uh, abdominal pain or discomfort, and pleuritis. And what will be the um, physical findings when you examine the patient? It will usually include there will be jaundice and hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. So the presence of splenomegaly indicates that there is portal hypertension. And hepatomegaly usually present. So, what is what will be the investigation? Usually, uh, liver function test shows there will be polystatic pattern in polystatic pattern of uh, jaundice, and there will be elevation of alkaline phosphate and bilirubin level during the during the acute phase of cholangitis, and with, uh, there will be only mild to moderate mild mild elevation of serum transaminases or usual seen, and uh, in the um, in this data stage that is a severe stages, there will be development of there will be, will be the development of hypoalbuminemia and clotting abnormalities. In addition to this, the ANCA antibodies will be present and there will be low titers of uh, ANA and anti smooth muscle antibodies usually present in primary serogen polyangitis. So the diagnostic modality is seen that is the diagnostic. The diagnostic modality that is diagnostic radiological tool is MRCP, which shows multiple irregular switches, uh, switching and dilatation. So these, these for these patients, ERCP is usually kept preserved only when there is uh, any therapeutic intervention is there. And following that ERCP, MRCP is usually done. And in the early stages, the liver biopsy shows peridactyl. Uh, Onion skin fibrosis and inflammation with portal edema and bile duct proliferation, which leads to expansion of the portal tract. And in the later stages, when you perform a liver biopsy in this patient, you will see there will be there will be fibrosis and progressing in a, uh, progress into inevitably progresses to biliary cirrhosis and uh, obliterated to cholangitis, which leads to which is so called as vanishing bile duct syndrome. So, what is the other name for uh, this primary serogen polyangitis? Is vanishing bile duct syndrome. So, what is the management? What is the management? There is usually no cure for the no permanent cure for this disease. Then there is uh, any predisposing factor. If you if you try to correct the predisposing factor, you can uh, decrease the progression of the disease, rate of progression of the disease. So when these patients are kept on arthrodeoxycholic uh, acid, there will be decreased chances of getting colon, uh, carcinoma colon, risk of uh, carcinoma colon decreases, and fat soluble uh, vitamins are usually given as replacement to decrease uh, for uh, as as these patients are also having malabsorption, and for ma management of polystasis and its complications, specific treatment of disease process are indicated. And what will be the medium survival? The median survival is usually 10 to 12 years in patients who are symptomatic, or 15 more than 15 years in the patients who are asymptomatic. And as we, as previously said, the cause of death in these patients is by liver failure. So many immunosuppressive agents are have been tried, but they, uh, they didn't show any promising results. So how to how do we manage the complications in these patients? 
patient. In case of acute attacks, you can keep a broad spectrum of antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin and all those things. If cholangiography shows obstruction, so, uh, you can give a mechanical relief to that uh, obstruction by passing a plastic stand, plastic stand by a balloon dilatation by ERCP. And uh, for uh, metabolic bone diseases, which, uh, you uh, usually prescribe the bisphosphonates and uh, vitamin D3 and calcium supplementation. So the, the final surgical treatment is uh, resection of the extrahepatic bile ducts and biliary and with, uh, and with biliary reconstruction it is usually done in patients who are non-serotic non -serotic patients and who are serotic and having a liver cell failure these patients are subjected to orthotropic transplantation and the, the five year survival is usually 80 to 90 percent and chances of getting the colon carcinoma increases after transplant so next coming to IG4 associated cholangitis. As previously discussed, it is closely related to autoimmune pancreatitis. And these usually present, these patients are usually present with uh, features of obstructive jaundice. And there will be cholangiographic appearance suggesting primarily serotonin cholangitis with or without alar cholangiocarcinoma. And uh, serum IgG4 levels are often raised with, uh, uh, with LFT showing uh, obstructive type of jaundice. So, liver biopsy shows lipoplasma cytic infiltrate with IgG4 cell plasma cell. Apart from uh, when, when compared to primary syndrome cholangitis, these IgG4 associated cholangitis uh, uh, response to steroids. So, steroids are the mainstay of treatment for IgG4 associated cholangitis. So, that is the class for today. So, in the next class, we will be discussing uh, in a common. Pavan, Pavan, respond. Sir, sir, uh, sir. For your, for your class, uh, malabsorption syndromes uh, are having dealt or not? Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are de dealt, sir. Are already dealt. Uh, yes, sir. Ulcer, gastric ulcer. No, sir. Gastric carcinoma not done. And uh, gastric carcinomas? No, sir. No. And uh, so we are, we are left with the gastric carcinoma, hepatic carcinoma, hepatic tumors, and uh, gastric uh, gastric ulcers. Yes, sir. So, um, so this, com uh, this completes the GAT. Okay. Or any other topics? Or any other topics. Only hepatic tumors, gastric tumors, and uh, gastric cultures. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, then. We will be completing it within uh, three to four weeks. And uh, most of the most of the GIT will be in your uh, exam for, uh, for internal assessment exam. Which is when, will we, when is your internal assessment exam? 24th, sir. Uh, mostly by 20, for 24th, the entire GAT will be there. Okay. Okay, so sir. So that's the, okay. We will continue with class here. Thank you. Thank you, sir.